Alrighty. Well, the new year is upon us. It's been inexorably leading us to hopes of a much better year. But it's time to look back at the important things that have occurred in aviation. And I don't know of many subjects that are more important to its future or its well being than flight instruction. And as one of the preeminent uh, professionals in that chosen field, we're happy to uh, welcome Rod Machado. Rod, welcome to Airborne and Aero News and all the other crazy things we were going to throw, throw at you with this. Thank but you, I wanted to have a chat um, about two areas. One is the state of flight instruction. Where are we? What's, what, what is happening to us? And then where do we go from here? How do we make it better and more important, make aviation more welcoming to the next generation? To answer that question, what is the state of flight instruction, um, it, it would be best to compare it to what the state of flight instruction was, let's say, 10, 15, 20, or 30 years ago. So let's take 30 years ago in this case. Uh, um, my impression that uh, flight instruction as it is today, has it has certainly become more professional in the sense that uh, I think uh, more instructors are aware of their their obligations, their teaching obligations. They're certainly aware of the uh, requirements, uh, better requirements, more specific requirements for flight tests uh, via the uh, airman certification standards. So I think as a general rule, flight instructors have become more aware, better at teaching, and uh, their responsibilities. As far as the products that are being produced by today's flight instructors, we're placing a lot more emphasis on technology. With glass cockpits being all the rage, uh, that has uh, caused the flight instruction community to focus a great deal on that type of training. Autopilot use, uh, glass cockpit use, uh, and this the concept of cockpit resource management and things along those lines. And that's not bad either. Those things you need to know. Um, I do think, though, uh, in my own sort of uh, self-interested sort of way, having come from a background of uh, very basic stick and rudder training when I learned to fly, that a lot of those uh, basic or quite a few of those basics have been, well, have diminished uh, in terms of uh, being taught at the uh, basic level in general aviation. I'll give you a good example of that, uh, slow flight at minimum controllable airspeed. As you know, the uh, FA has removed slow flight at MCA, minimum controllable airspeed, uh, completely from the um, airplane flying handbook. It no longer, uh, it, I think it only mentions it a couple of times, and that's with, with reference to flying a multi-engine airplane. The FAA has uh, moved away from that to this idea of slow flight actually being done at a speed that's very near your typical 1.3 VS uh, approach speed for most airplanes, which basically is nowhere near slow flight. But that's the way the FAA has moved, and the trend has been uh, to uh, move away from that and move towards this idea of technology being able to assist you in uh, the behaviors and the, the safety that slow flight at minimum controllable airspeed once offered. A good example of that is uh, emphasis is placed now on the stall horn for stall recovery. And uh, if you read the ACS and several of these different, uh, uh, for the commercial and for the private, the idea that when the stall horn goes off, that is representative of the actual stall, which is not, of course. The actual stall occurs when the wings can no longer sustain the airplane in flight, and the airplane then pitches down and, uh, in its normal uh, attempt to recover from the stall, and aided by the pilot, of course. So um, the technology has, in, in this sense, subsumed what might have been basics for the general aviation pilot. That That is a, a big concern to me. I. I at the private pilot level, basics have to be reinforced. And if they're not, uh, we will see that uh, later on in uh, the development of a pilot. And uh, it's unfortunate, but uh, that is happening. And the FAA has not remedied that with the, uh, they've not gone back to slow flight at minimum control. That, that created... I don't think they ever will. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. If it looks good, it usually flies good. 
the Bristel series of aircraft is proof of that. Furthering their legacy of safety and efficiency, Bristel is proud to feature the Rotax 915 IS Turbo in the current lineup of aircraft. The 915 IS Turbo power plant offers more power than ever before in a light sport aircraft. Learn more about Bristel at www.sportflyingusa.com. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. You know, I sold a glider 51 years ago. So this is back at a time when nothing fancy. It was just stick and rudder and you stuck with that and, you know, occasionally covering up whatever instruments you did have. But to me, denying physics or faking physics puts you in a position to be broken by physics at the most inopportune times. And I've never understood the need to be so concerned about getting anywhere near something that uh, portrays a risk without explaining and allowing them to experience the risk. Nobody will ever really understand a stall until they experience a full physical stall. Same thing with spins. And especially as somebody who spent a lot of time in aerobatic instruction, I'm aghast at anybody trying to dumb it down. Well, it, no, you make a very, very good point. And uh, there is a concept in psychology called state dependent learning. And state dependent learning has it that the emotional state uh, under which you learn something, under which you, you've been trained or your b behavior has been shaped, uh, then that is the emotional state under which you will best recall that information. If a student learns a stall under relaxed and calm conditions and uh, not, uh, and I'm not talking about panic conditions, but under mm -hmm. relaxed, calm conditions, never gets near the stall, then of course, when the airplane stalls, um, the, the, for, the, for basic training, they'll hear the stall horn, lower the nose, and it's all pretty much a, an ordinary sort of experience. If a student learns stalls under a heightened state of arousal so where the airplane actually does stall and they realize, oh my gosh, my airplane is stalling. I've got to do something to act now. And then they respond appropriately. Then when an airplane actually does stall, the student will respond, obviously, in a heightened state of arousal and then will be better able to recall or use his or her stall recovery skill. You got to give them real life experience. And there's just nothing better than getting in an airplane, experiencing the stall, experiencing the heights to heighted state of emotion and learning to deal with that. And therefore, in the event that you actually do have an emergency, you know, then your reflexes since under this heightened state of arousal, state dependent learning uh, will come into play and you'll be better able to handle the situation. Well, the problem we have right now is we keep training this way. We are not going to produce the kind of extraordinary pilots that we grew up with and admired and did extraordinary things because, unfortunately, for whatever reasons, they got put into extraordinary positions that required developing the extraordinary talents that, that came to be. Um, yes. I'm surprised that the community has kind of allowed itself at this point to be again, boxed in uh, and limited in what and how they can teach according to what the FAA dictates. Well, um, again, the FAA's dictates are rather general in nature. And what we do is we, we hope that the flight instructor, the average flight instructor, is going to place emphasis on airplane control as the most important fundamental in primary flight flight training. Yes, everything else is important, but airplane control at basic attitude flying skills, which translates into basic stick and rudder skills, are so fundamental that if any of those are missed, uh, if they're not taught properly, if the behavior is not reinforced early in the stages, those formative hours of training for a student, then the student 
I'm sure will be able to fly safely as long as they don't get themselves into an, an awkward, difficult, or unusual situation. Strong crosswind landings, a steep base skidding turn on the final approach, or departure and inability to use rudder properly, and you end up in a departure stall in a skidding turn. And that is, uh, uh, those, are, those are terrible things. But um, as with all things, the basics are so fundamental that if they're missed, then, or if they're not taught properly, the student suffers in the long run. I'll give you a good example of this. Um, I once did a research project to determine what it was that uh, allows people to reduce the uh, chance of being immobilized by panic. And we do know that uh, if you're scared uh, sufficiently in a high anxiety state, you can simply be immobilized during headlights phenomena. You have to have three things. Number one, you have to have a plan. Number two, you have to uh, believe in the plan. And number three, you have to practice the plan enough to make it a habit. So you have to have a plan. In other words, as a flight instructor teaching a student, the plan is to teach the basic stick and rudder coordination skill, the five basic attitudes you have uh, in an airplane, attitude plus power equals performance. That's attitude plus power, not attitude plus throttle position. Power is the key there, equals performance. And to train those things in such a way that the student, those become um, the basic reflexes of a pilot. And the student is in position, or item number two, the student believes in their value because the student sees them uh, and their ability, their, sees them in action, sees their ability to work. For example, landing in a crosswind, student knows, oh yeah, ailerons to, uh, uh, to manip manipulate the sideways movement of the aircraft, rudders to keep the nose aligned with the runway for a side slip touchdown and a crosswind landing. Uh, those things are skills the student can see and see in effect. And as a result, have a plan, that is taught by the flight instructor, believe in the plan, the student sees them in effect, and practice them enough to make them a habit. And the last one is extremely important. And that means that sometimes you, you have to reinforce the skill as a flight instructor, uh, maybe six, seven lessons, eight lessons, nine lessons. Uh, it has to be reinforced sufficiently in order to be able to uh, become a permanent behavioral change with the student and it I, I mean it's really pretty simple but you have to have an instructor that's willing to teach to the basic level and with the understanding that later on the student's development is going to be uh, uh, much more assured uh, much the student will be much more competent and uh, much more capable Alrighty then tomorrow we'll look at the future of flight training with rod and see what he has to say 